Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I got a great article from Nikolay Stanaf over at Dreamex the other day about Spring Boot configuration. Uh, the article's over on the serverside.com. You can read it textually there. We've also got the code up on GitHub. Um, but I wanted to take you through actually the process of setting up some Spring Boot configuration examples uh, and show you how to master that application properties file and easily bring the data in that file into your applications. So uh, with the example that uh, Nicolay provided us, uh, the first thing he said was go in and create a, a spring starter project. And there are a couple of settings that he suggested. I overrode them a little bit because I wanted to put uh, some of the names of uh, some of the server side stuff in there and my domain name, but I don't think that really matters too much. He said, put a, a group in there, make sure that you've got the artifact ID specified. So it's something other than demo. I always like changing the snapshot version on these examples to 1.0 snapshot. I named it the spring configuration tutorial. Configuring spring, something like that. Um, but Basically, the, the the first part, spring configuration, uh, but basically the first part is supposed to be relatively simple. And actually, I'm going to change that. Sorry, I should have had, there we go. The first part's relatively simple. You just create the project, right? Fill in the old GAV, G-A-V, group artifact and version here. Um, don't need to add in any special projects. Just set up your Spring Boot starter project and click finish. From there, head over into the resources folder. Spring's still thinking about creating this file here. Head over into the resources folder. There we are. And take a look at application properties. And throw a bunch of application properties in there. Now, as I said, uh, Nicolay put a couple of his own in there. I uh, decided to change it up a little bit. You can put the name of his company, Dreamix, in there a little bit as well. Um, but we've got some interesting data here, right? We've got, this is the basic stuff you see in a properties file, right? It's your basic string fields, right? Um, but look at this. Uh, we've also set up a list, right? So a couple of fields that are supposed to be part of a list. I think that looks uh, interesting, something that you don't always see in your property files. Here we've even got maps, key value pairs. And something that I'd never seen before, but Nikolai introduced me to, was the idea of, of actually setting up an inner class through property files. Um, and so this is the, the basic property file here. I'm going to save that. It's application resources right under there. Um, and we're going to take these fields and bring them into our Spring Boot application, even try and test them a little bit. Now you notice that the Spring configuration example application class already exists, right? That's the... That's the the, the bootstrap for the Spring Boot application. We're going to play with that in a, a little bit. Um, but before we do that, uh, Nicolay suggested that, you know, go in and create a, a brand new class that's going to hold all of your configuration. And then anytime somebody needs to access configuration, they just go and ask this class for it. So I'm going to create a class called Spring Boot Configuration. I'll click finish there. And I'm going to decorate it with a couple of handsome annotations. So uh, configuration properties and component. Do a little control shift O to organize the imports there. As soon as those imports go in, the errors go away. And now we've got a, a nice little Java class that's supposed to hold all of our configuration. Now also notice spring boot config, exa config example specified as the prefix, that spring boot config example, that maps to the root name of all of these properties, right? You can see that lining up there. Um, and so we specify that as the prefix, and then we only have to worry about what happens after the prefix, like this is an inner class, map, list, and then properties, name, suite, and active. Now let's just say you wanted these properties here. Now that's a, a string property. That's a, an int, a number. That's a, a Boolean value. Say you actually wanted to bring those into your application. Um, well, it's really simple. All you need to do is just 
add in the various properties. So let me add those in here. And then of course you want to add in the requisite setters and getters. So source, generate getters and setters. And we will generate that. And now that's really all we have to do. Now if you actually want to use this class anywhere, access any of these properties, all you have to do is auto wire an instance of this class into any other spring component and you just have to call the getters and it will pull the data from that configuration file. So it's all really neat and really simple. Oh, by the way, when you use the configuration properties, uh, they like you to actually go in and add this Spring Boot configuration processor to your POM file. So I'm actually going to tell it to do that. I'll say, hey, add that to the, the POM file. That's the only other change we need to make to the POM file. And if you were to dig into the POM file, you'd actually see that added as a dependency now. That's the only dependency that's been added, the Spring Boot config processor. I think it'll actually still work even if you don't do that, but um, that is what version 4 of Spring tells me to do. Okay, so now we've got these this uh, Spring Boot configuration class. It's got all these setters and getters in it. Apparently it's magically going to pull this data out, DreamX, 113, and True. Well, let's see if that actually happens. Um, how can we do that? Well, uh, I'm going to jerry-rig this spring class here uh, to make it runnable. I know I should probably do a, a proper test or something like that, but, um, you know, I always do this. Uh, I'm just going to go in here and add this implements command line runner. Do a control shift O to organize that import. Um, and also, if uh, a class is a command line runner, you're supposed to override the run method. So now we've done that. So I've overridden the run method. Oh, and the most important thing I forgot to do. Uh, if you actually want to use that config object, you got to auto wire it in. Control Shift O, organize all my imports. So now the thing is with this Spring configuration example application, I mean, most people are, are familiar with Spring Boot being used for, you know, uh, MVC. They used to be used for RESTful web services. If you had this command line runner, it could just run as a basic standalone application. Um, you just have to override this run method and put whatever you want in there. Um, and so to just kind of demonstrate how this works, you can see, well, I've got my Spring Boot class. This could be any Spring Boot class, any component. I've auto-wired the Spring Boot config in. I've tried to access some of its properties. I'm going to click Control Save here. Right click and say run this as a Spring Boot app. Uh, now as I said, I, I, I've got a, a little bit of the overhead of running Spring there, but you can see quite clearly I've actually pulled in those three properties from the properties file. Now to, just to, to do a little bit more razzle-dazzle Let's say you wanted to take these application properties that were held as a list and held as a map. Notice that the name there after the prefix is list and map. Uh, I can actually go in here, go into the Spring Boot config file, add those fields in. So there's private map, the name of the field is map, the name of the field is list. Notice that maps to map and list there. Control Shift O to organize my imports. And now I can access those properties as though they are a list or a map. Uh, now that's pretty cool too. So actually having application properties here that aren't just string values, but you know you can actually pull this into a, a map and a key. And if you really want to play this game on expert level, uh, what you can actually do is go into this spring configuration file. Right, with all these properties here. I'm gonna I'll just scroll down so you can kind of see the whole class there. Close this little class right now. I'm gonna do something really crazy here. I'm gonna create some room. But I'm actually going to create an entire new inner class. So I'm gonna throw that in here. So I'm gonna create an inner class 
This inner class is going to have three properties, property one, property two, property three. Uh, the prefix is inner class, which is appended to the prefix up here. And it's got these three properties along with its setters and getters. This inner class actually maps to these application properties here, annotation, XML, and YAML. So now I've gone beyond just strings and lists and maps to actually using these variables to create a, a crazy inner class here um, like that. So, so it's pretty cool stuff. You know, the next question is, how do you test it? Well, I'm just going to throw a couple more print lines over here. Right, so I'll say get that list and get the zeroth element in the list. Maybe I'll get the entire map, see if we can get like a JSON string based on the map. Um, and here I'll try and get property one of that inner class. Right click and say run this as a Spring Boot application. It runs. And now you can see the company is Dreamix. The suite that they're in is 113. Uh, it's true that they are active. Uh, list data zero was the first element in the list. There's the whole map as a key value pair JSON string. And even here, get inner class, get property one. You notice that's actually bringing us back annotations. So anyways, I think that's pretty impressive. So anyways, big thumbs up to Nikolay. Hopefully that's, uh, that was the first that we published on the server side. Hopefully it's not the last because uh, I know everybody's really interested in all these advanced spring topics. But there you go. That's how you manage spring boot configuration using that application properties file.